So the story is this. I knew I had to get a computer that has an amplified output, a computer that runs Windows, a computer that runs Winamp, and all I have to do is press the X key on the keyboard, and we got it. So now, how do you do that? Well, I didn't know either. So I thought of a number of different ways. I said, well, we need something to hit the X key on the keyboard. So I was actually going to set up a solenoid mounted to the keyboard that will actually tap the X key. But I scrapped that idea. I said, no, that's way too mechanical. There's really no reason to go to that. So I came up with another solution. It seems a keyboard is pretty simple. All it is is a matrix. I had an old keyboard, I'll show it to you in a little while, that uh, I took apart and there was a circuit board. And it had on that circuit board six little solder blobs and then, oh, maybe 13 or 15 solder blobs after a space. So I looked at the keyboard and I said, well, this is simply a matrix. The six refer to the rows of keys on your keyboard. If you have a standard desktop keyboard, you'll notice there are six rows of keys not counting any multimedia crap that you don't need. But anyways, on a standard keyboard, there would be six rows of keys, and then however many keys across would be the other blobs. So I took an old keyboard, I took it apart, and I hooked it up to an old computer I didn't care about in case I was going to blow something up. Just booted to a DOS prompt, because all I had to do was see an X. And I started probing those wires and connecting them together. So I took an alligator clip wire and hooked on, I remember the solder blobs, I think it was the second one, or maybe the fifth one, whatever it was, it doesn't make a difference either way until I open another keyboard up, which is another project entirely. Uh, all I wanted to do was just test that, so I took an alligator clip wire from there and I kept probing all the other ones till I found it. Very simply, all you need to do from there is solder a pair of wires on. Run that to where you need, which would be of course the doorbell button, and you're all set. But of course, I wasn't satisfied. I wanted a lighted doorbell button. That's a problem. The reason that's a problem is because of the way a standard doorbell works. You can see it behind me there. The way it works is you have a transformer that runs one end to the bell, the other end goes to the doorbell button itself, and then ultimately up to the other side of the bell. Uh, in the button itself, in the doorbell button itself, there's a little light bulb and it's wired in series. The reason it works is because the current that the bell would draw is much higher than that of the little light bulb. So the light bulb glows. There is actually power, a very small amount of power going through the bell at all times, but until you hit the doorbell button itself and short it across the bulb, if you will, and allow full current to go to the bell, that's when the bell would ring. So I needed a way to isolate that because even the little filament in uh, the, the light bulb in a doorbell button wasn't going to work. So I was talking to the wife about this one for a while and we sat down one day and I, over dinner I happened to mention that and I mentioned I wanted a lighted doorbell button and her not knowing anything about electronics whatsoever, she says, I don't know, use a relay or something. And I said, a relay? What the hell are you talking about? That'll never work. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And I sat there in silence for a moment after that, and I said, a relay, huh? Actually, that just might work. Oh, okay. Get me a sheet of paper and a pencil and go away. I need to sit and think for a while. And so I did. I sat and I thought and I thought, and I figured it out. And you will see the schematic of how that works at the end of this video. And so here is your lighted doorbell button. Now if you compare that to your button at home, you'll notice that it's quite dim. And I actually like that. Just for fun, we'll open the door up here, give her a press, and it works. And here's the keyboard itself. It's an ancient compact Presario. It happens to actually have some multimedia buttons, but that actually was wired separately. I forget exactly how they did it. And uh, the internet pod over here, whatever the hell that was supposed to do. But here are your six rows of keys, and then again, however many across. And if you look over here, you'll see on the wire, I'll see if I can just pull it up a bit. 
See, the white wire is the wire originally, and here's just a pair of wires that come out. It's connected to this white wire that runs up, and ultimately to the relays that are here. There's actually three that drive the entire thing. The keyboard is still perfectly usable. It works, all the other keys work still. But you'll notice, those sharp-eyed viewers out there, that there was a uh, regular doorbell as well that was hooked up. And I needed a way to shunt that. The white wire you saw running up actually runs into the PC as well. And I tapped into the 12 volt rail on the power supply. So whenever the machine is powered, it sends power to two out of those three relays. That shunts the old doorbell to the new thing. It essentially kills power from that. So the doorbell button is shifted between the regular doorbell and the shoutcast, I mean, the uh, and the doorbell server. And uh, that, I don't have a uh, actual diagram, I don't believe of that. Uh, but that's basically how that one works. It just shunts that over by connecting to the normally open or normally closed contacts of the, of the, uh, the relays. Uh, I put one for both sides of the uh, doorbell because I didn't have a, a double pole double throw relay, just single pole relay. So I used two of them wired in tandem and it just shifts and shunts everything over to basically isolate the doorbell button from that. So if I do, and I'm not going to, but if I do power off the shout, the uh, doorbell server, excuse me, and uh, if you look at the doorbell button, it's lighted a lot brighter because typical doorbell systems run on, oh, say, 16 or 18 volts AC. AC or DC doesn't matter. It happens to be AC. But uh, that runs on 16 or 18 volts, where the computer is only supplying 12. So you do get a very dimly lit doorbell button, but that's okay because an incandescent bulb, such as what's in a doorbell button, runs for a much longer time when you run it at a lower voltage than it was designed for. If you run it dimly, it'll last a lot longer. Hey, that's a great idea. How many times have you gone to somebody's house? Well, nobody uses doorbells anymore. You just call on your friggin' cell phones but and announce that you're there, like the whole party has to stop and greet you at the door instead of just ringing a doorbell anymore. Can't even do that. People are afraid to open their front doors now. But anyways... <laughs> It uh, it runs at a lower voltage, so the bulb in it will last a lot longer. Because like I was saying, you go into people's houses and their doorbell button isn't lit because the bulb burned out. Or how about those doorbells that have like a hole in the middle where the bulb, the heat from the bulb actually melted through it over the many years it's been there in service. That'll never happen with this system. It's running at much too low of a voltage and puts out a lot less heat. So I went on that count also. And the premise behind that is uh, actually very simple how it works. It works exactly on the same principle as that of a regular doorbell system, where the button is wired in tandem, or I'm sorry, in series with the coil of the relay. It so turns out that the filament of the bulb requires less current than the coil in the relay. I just happened to get lucky that way, so believe it or not, the wife was right the whole time <laughs> without just blindly guessing like that. So it works exactly the same way, so current goes through the little bulb. When you press it, it shorts right across that and gives power to the relay, which then hits the uh, normally open contact to common, which is connected to the pair of wires going back to the X key on the keyboard that goes into the system and plays the file that's loaded. So it's basically a Rube Goldberg contraption, like something Wiley e. Coyote would set up on Roadrunner and, and Looney Tunes and all that, but it works. If his stuff didn't blow up because he got it from Acme, which I guess was the back in the day, today's made in China stuff, <laughs> even though Acme is supposedly a backronym for uh, American company making everything. Uh, anyway, all this stuff always blew up. I don't know if that was poor planning or poor products. We'll call it the China of the day, I guess you will. But anyway, that's pretty much the story of the doorbell server and that. And the one question you might be left with is, 
Why? And the answer is very simple. Because I can. If you're going to say, just because you can, doesn't mean you should, well, bring up that old question, if all your friends were jumping off a building, would you jump too? Yes, we're all going to die anyway. Go ahead, do it. Because I can. That's why I did it. I hope you enjoyed this very long, drawn-out, uh, babbling bullshit with Jay video about how the uh, doorbell server actually works. At the end of this video, I'm going to put up the schematic that I drew up, very crudely, of course, but I will put that up so you can see how it's wired. It's not uh, a schematic in terms of the conventional sense of it, because I don't know all the symbols and all that, but I, I know what it means for myself, and hopefully you can make some sense out of it. I thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.